welcome. Welcome to another hopefully a very large series of videos again uh, with me Virle, Virle de Bruyne and this time about Neptune. So I have made, if you want to know more about a natal chart aspect, an aspect in a natal chart or a, a plan um, uh, with an outer planet like South Saturn, uh, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto. If you want to know more about that, I have made plenty of videos already about that. I've made videos about Saturn, I've made videos about Pluto and Uranus and also Chiron. And now, so the last thing I need to do is to, uh, to end this, this series is Neptune. And this video is about Neptune and Mars. This is the first video. So what, what, what can you expect from this video? First of all, I want to give more information about having this aspect with Neptune and Mars in a natal chart. And then having a transit of Neptune to your natal Mars. And then in synastry, just a tiny little part about the synastry as well. So let's get started because I've got a feeling that this is going to be a long video. I've read it so much down here and hopefully I will say what I want to say. First of all, if you have in a natal chart a connection between Neptune and Mars, which means maybe a conjunction, maybe a square between the two, maybe in an opposition, maybe a trine, maybe a sextile, any aspect will be applicable for you. And the trines and the sextiles are the more easy way of dealing with those two energies. And the square opposition and even conjunction is the more challenging way of this aspect. So let's start with what is Mars all about. It's very easy. Mars is all about our drive. It's our action. It's our ego. So we need Mars in our chart. We need to have an ego. We need to have Mars in order to start things. So Mars is a starter and you could say Saturn is the one that persists. So uh, you need to discipline to persist something which is Saturn. But Mars is the starter, the initiator. It's the intention. Uh, it is what makes me start this video and decide I'm going to make this video. You need Mars to do that. So that is Mars. It's, your, um, uh, it's about uh, how you assert yourself too much sometimes and sometimes too little. So being submissive or being aggressive, a good Mars is being assertive, is doing what it has to do with confidence. So a lot, uh, when we talk about Mars, we talk about confidence as well, being confident enough to expect other people and respect uh, other people, but also respect ourselves and not neglecting ourselves. So, um, and it's our sex drive as well. A uh, little detail there. Now, what is Neptune? Neptune um, has also um, uh, the tendency of having going a bit to the extremes there. And I'm going to do that because then you understand better what Neptune is all about. Now, the, there, there are plenty of good things about Neptune. What it certainly does, what I think that Neptune does is it broadens our, uh, our uh, world. It, uh, makes, um, uh, it makes this world broader than what we only see with the five senses. So it also, when, it, when Neptune is strong in someone's chart, it makes someone very inspired. It makes someone way more um, imaginative. Having fantasy and imagination and therefore being very inspirational. Um, we have trust in divine if we have the good qualities of Neptune we have a trust that and therefore it's connected to spirituality to spirit that we believe that there is something that is bigger than us and that is having um, uh, you know that is um, the things that are happening to us that it is all because of a bigger picture and it's not to um, uh, it, it's to trust in that divine nature. What it also does, Neptune, is making people more compassionate, um, sensitive in the way that you can, um, uh, that it, it, you are less judgmental. You understand people better. 
you have more compassion. It's also the planet of beauty, the planet of art, um, uh, and so on. So plenty of other things, but I think that's the main thing. Neptune can also be very destructive. I think that um, when you read books about outer planets like Pluto, Uranus, um, you read those books and sometimes you think, oh, Pluto and Uranus, it's uh, oh, quite destructive. But Neptune is not so bad. It's not true. Neptune can be as uh, wrecking, situations wrecking, uh, you know, being very negative and destructive as well. So Neptune is uh, not worse or any better than Pluto and Uranus. Because Neptune at its worst, it's about um, projection, projecting something, uh, because uh, idealizing too much, not wanting to see reality, living in a fantasy. Uh, and it's about deception. It's about deception because um, you are not uh, discerning, discerning, so you are not seeing what is there in front of you, uh, consciously or unconsciously. Um, it's the, the planet of the martyr, it's the planet of losing yourself. So you dissolve in something that is bigger than you, but you have no identity anymore. So you are no one. You don't know who you are. You was, um, the downside of Neptune is also escape. Therefore, it is associated with addictions and um, having no direction, basically. So there are parallel universes. That's not just one truth. There are many, many truths. That's the negative side of Neptune. So when you merge those two planets, it's like they don't understand each other that well. Even if it's a trine or even if it's um, a sextile, these are two planets that uh, are very far away from each other. So the dance between the two uh, must be done with a lot of caution in order to work, in order to have those positive things of Mars, which is assertiveness and which is, is the doing, and um, because that's what Mars is all about, it's the doing, it's the confidence, it's the ego, and then together with the positive side of Neptune is of course fantastic. So um, people who have um, uh, this in a natal chart, will, and especially the challenging aspects like a conjunction or a square or an opposition, will have to work through the challenge in order to um, have the positive side of Neptune in a combination with Mars. So um, what can it all be? Well, let's start with the positive side. Let's start with a positive side. If you have a very good understanding of what Mars and Neptune is all about, um, no, I start with the negative side. See, it's already starting, this Neptune energy, when I, I um, talk about Neptune. Now, Neptune, the negative side is, uh, for a great deal, no direction at all. So when you combine that with Mars, who is all about direction, who is all about ego, who is all about driving, thriving, when you have Mars and Neptune, these people, uh, very often in their lives and when they are younger, they don't know where they're heading at and um, they are learning to, to trust and um, to have a trust in, you could say, the divine in order to, um, to, to go and to do your steps to use your Mars, but without actually knowing where you're heading at. So, it's, prob it's, it's, not e it's easier said than done because if you don't know where you're heading at, if you, you don't know who you are actually, that's basically it. People with Mars and Neptune have struggles with the boundaries. Um, they have struggles with uh, or crossing over boundaries of other people and, um, or other people crossing your boundaries. And that could be destructive as well, you know, you can only... Uh, you can read the newspaper about all what is happening with, um, let's um, the, uh, how do you call them, priests and all of them, all those candles about um, uh, the abuse, the sexual abuse of the pedophilia and all of that. Um, of course, sexual abuse and um, we have to talk about sex actually when we talk about Mars because um, Mars is the sexual drive and it is also the drive to go forwards. And it's not always with Pluto that people 
have it in their natal charts, a connection to Pluto or Saturn, that they are a bit more prone to abuse. It's also Neptune. And there the role of the deception becomes more important. That's why, like in the case in the, in the news with all those priests, you would think they know what to do, they know what's right and they know what's wrong, but actually they don't. And you see that a lot with Mars and Neptune, the, the tendency of scandals, the tendency of um, you don't expect that. Um, and, like, I don't know, I don't remember the name of that priest, but it was terrible when he said, you know, um, so they were, he was confronted with the facts what happened and he said but God will forgive so uh, God will f so in other words they that's really tip the very negative side of Mars and Neptune in a combination is that they they can do something wrong and they are consciously or unconsciously know that it's not okay but they don't but they do it anyway and then afterwards they get away with it by saying, uh, like this priest saying, yes, uh, but uh, God forgives me, uh, I'm Christian, uh, I'm always forgiven. So you see, this is uh, really the, I mean, this is the extreme, of course. Uh, but um, explaining something in, in extremes is the best, especially when you're learning astrology. So this is the very extreme negative way of Mars and Neptune. It's deceptive, it's you being deceived, or you deceive, or you have the tendency to deceive others. And even if you are a very good person, even if you are a very good person and deep down inside you're not a bad person, but it's like um, there is no boundaries with your Mars. So you can't, it's the opposite of a Mars and Saturn, you could say, because Saturn is a mastering planet and it masters um, a Mars, so it, it restricts it. But with the Mars and the Neptune, you know, with the goodwill. Sometimes these people say, um, I've done things and I couldn't help myself, you know, it's, or at its worst, they, these people say, it's other people who have, who have triggered me. And um, hopefully they're a bit more evolved and they say, you know, sometimes it's just really hard to restrict my, it's also the desire nature of Mars. So to restrict those desires. And it can be a really, really battle uh, for that person. So it's always easy to judge and to put the finger. But um, when these people um, say, like, um, I'm thinking about my sister now. She, she's not having Mars Neptune, but she's a very Neptunian person. And she's got the moon conjunct Neptune. And she says to me, Vivo, you can't, cannot understand that because you're not like that. But of course, everyone, you know, can try to understand. But I have four planets in Virgo, so it's really a bit, uh, so I can understand that. She says, you don't understand it. She says, sometimes the desire is so strong um, that you cannot, even, you cannot even fight it. And the thing is, it's not, I'm not saying this to, um, to say everything that, the, the, the wrong things that people do, to say it's all okay. But um, it is true, it is that Mars being at its worst, you know, having no boundaries and then you just read the newspapers and you find out how terrible that can be. So, but it is true, someone can work for a lifetime on, on like a Mars square, Neptune for instance, and being a very good person but always being, having to work very, very hard to not go over their own boundaries because if you cross boundaries of other people you're crossing your own boundary um, and vice versa if people walk all over you which i also see a lot with people having mars neptune in their chart if a lot of people walk all over you you actually neglect yourself you actually abandon yourself and um, it, it's very uh, depressing to uh, acknowledge that it, it's depressing to acknowledge that you have you have you have been way too open and on the other hand it's the way that you are so you need to forgive yourself and the best thing to do of course is to um, work on confidence work on confidence work on your connection on your higher connection with your higher self uh, if you don't believe in God or with God if you do believe in God because that's the only way to put you on the right track and um, uh, and to fight that 
And it is possible to do that, but it's work. It's some work with the Neptune. And another thing is working on your confidence so that you are better with the boundaries, setting boundaries or better with not crossing them. Those boundaries, uh, crossing them of, of other people so that you don't deceive, that you don't fall into the trap of deception. Because these people with Mars Neptune, they are prone for deception, whether it happens to them or whether they do it to other people. You know, I don't think what's worse actually. Probably, um, probably when you, I don't know, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But um, so people who have this um, Mars Neptune connection can definitely, if, if they're having this challenge, they can definitely turn it into a good Mars, which is assertive and which is in full of respect of themselves and therefore also other people. And when you are starting to achieving that, it can be a long process, but you know, everyone have, has their lessons. And if you are starting to achieve that, you are starting to do things for other people because that's also Mars Neptune. You are doing things for the collective. You are standing up, which is Mars, for other people. This is also very Mars Neptunian like. And um, uh, that, was, uh, that is also has to do with um, uh, how, I, how do I want it? How do I want to do it? And I'm going to do it that way. But also using the inspiration of Neptune, new, using the, uh, the good things about Neptune. So putting that into your Mars, you could say. And being very focused, but then let go of the result and uh, being very much in the now and also being aware of your intention. So every time a Mars-Neptune person should think twice before they do something. And, um, and what they should do or, or could do is thinking about what is my intention with the action that I want to do this? Is my intention correct or not? So uh, exploring that. And this is why your higher self can help you. What is good, what is bad, this is really needed to, uh, to use that. Because what these people lack with Mars Neptune is discernment, you know. Um, other people who don't have the aspects would say probably, oh, but why don't you leave your husband? I mean, um, he's uh, cheating on you and, um, you know, he's doing that like this and you, you are just coping with that. He's crossing your boundaries. But then you can learn uh, instead of saying yes, but you know, he, he's a poor soul and he's having troubles with himself and you know, he's, he can be very gentle and he can be very, uh, very romantic and, and all of that and uh, whatever reason it is or the sex is very nice or I don't know, or, or he has his good times as well. You um, need to learn about discernment. You need to learn about uh, your boundaries again, your confidence, how, how you think about yourself. You know, if you attract a person like that, what you think about yourself is not very high. If you let yourself crossing over all of the time over your boundaries. So, um, and if you are someone like that, you can ask people that you, you, your friends, for instance, who have a more clear objective side, you can, you can start listening to them and, and start thinking about, okay, but if I want to change that, I have to do something about my confidence. So there's certainly a way out. There's also a way out with, if it's more like the Mars Neptune is, um, if you are a person and uh, it's in an area of your chart that has to do with like 10th house, for instance, direction. And if you're not knowing where you're heading at, to the left or to, or to the right, um, it, it's a good thing to go a bit with the flow and not worrying too much about that, but doing your steps, step by step. I'm going to give you a very practical um, example. Like, um, and it's now the transit that I'm going to look at. So what if you have, if you're not having this in a natal chart, but if you're having this in a transit, let's say you have Neptune on your Mars and, um, and it's causing you trouble because it's again, Mars is about what you desire. Mars is about direction. And often 
with people with Neptune and Mars are offered more possibilities and then they don't know the, the which, which so I have this example of this man who had a Neptune Mars transit was it an opposition or a conjunction I can't recall but um, and it was uh, he was offered different choices for work so he wanted to stay in his country because um, uh, he, uh, his wife and children wanted to stay there, they were happy there, but he wasn't happy with the job and he was offered a job abroad, far away, to, um, uh, to, to, to have his dream job. So he was in a dilemma and when it is a really desire to go somewhere else, but then of course um, neglecting you could say or not neglecting but um, crossing the boundaries of someone else which is the wife and the children who don't want to go um, you, you have to do something and you know it because if you're not doing anything you're crossing your own boundaries or you're not respecting your own uh, boundaries anymore and you're not being true to yourself so you have to find this compromise and um, the thing is or the best advice is always to be able to compromise this by just trying it out because one of the options is always an unknown option like in this particular example he this person didn't know what the job was he he had a fantasy about it and he idealized it which is typical about the mars neptune they think oh somewhere else is better and um so um, he he uh, he made the decision of going abroad alone for a couple of months. Uh, I think it was three months, which was terrible. The situation of leaving his family for three months, well, not leaving, but with the intention to come back, but trying it out, and he did. And he um, and it was at the end of the very transit that he had all the information. So the the Neptune gives you a kind of a protection of not doing. Um, you know, just giving you time and exploring the, the options that there are. And he had at the end of the, of, of the ride, you could say, the end of the journey, he said, I came back and uh, I, I'm not going to apply for that job. You know, it was a, um, how do you say that, three months of, a, um, of a tr trying out, or how do you say that? So he didn't take the job then. He, he said, I'm resigning. I, 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 uh, but he had to, the opportunity, it was the same company, and he had the opportunity to try it out a few months because they understood his situation. You have to be a bit lucky there, of course, but um, he found out he didn't like the job. He didn't like the job, but he didn't knew that before the transit of Mars, Neptune. So, so he did another job in the... Uh, in the same country but with another company and so everyone was happy so in that way it, it was a struggle for him a real struggle at tearing apart like ah oh, the longing and Mars is also the longing and the desire for something and but with the Neptune it's foggy you know you need to explore what you're gonna do and um, so that's just a, a, a tiny example of how a transit can work out. It can work out with relationships as well. Let's say you're having a very bad relationship, and um, but you don't have the uh, the guts to to um, or the courage to end that relationship for whatever reason it is, and then someone new comes along, and then all of a sudden they are interested in you as well. But it's it's always you know it's always this Neptunian thing about you not being available or they not being available 100% or living far away from uh, from them. So what do they do? The best thing then is uh, if they really have the desire to not stay with that one person, it is getting to know more of that other person and. Um, why is that? Because otherwise you just stay dreaming. You, I had, a, I had another client that had that situation and it was with someone from work but he, he worked in a call center so he was falling in love with someone he had never met. This typical Neptunian with, um, with a person, um, a colleague from another, um, uh, from another country and they, they were working at a call center. And he was having this bad relationship, what do I do, what do I do? So Neptune puts you in this place of a time out actually. 
So get to know that person if you're really interested. If you really want uh, to end your other relationship, because it, it's again, it's showing you. Look, maybe the grass is greener, but is the grass greener? You need to, you need to get to know that person. And um, uh, he didn't have a relationship with that person. He, they they met, and um, he didn't have a relationship. It didn't work out either. So. But he was able to end his other relationship as well. So it always has some, uh, some, some. Uh, you know, things are the way they have to be. Sometimes you can really uh, see that in in, a, in astrology, and um, so it's not necessarily always the easiest transit, Neptune on Mars, especially not when you are someone who is a go getter. Who always wants, um, who always get what they want. So suddenly they have Neptune squaring up to Mars or whatever, and then you know it's not that easy to get what you want, or you have to sacrifice what you want for the good, for the better, you know, in general. Um, and that is what these people learn. Now, um, a good way of using this aspect when you have Neptune on your Mars, it means that your actions need to be a bit more Neptunian, but not too much, of course. And what do I mean by that? I had this great example yesterday when uh, it's, it's football now and I was watching, uh, believe it or not, I was watching football because it was the Netherlands I was listening to Jan Mulder. Jan Mulder is a, a Dutch football, ex-football player and he's also a writer, a columnist and he had this, um, uh, he had this excellent explanation of Mars Neptune. He said that we can analyze, you know, it's the uh, analyze after the match that has been played and he said, you know, you can analyze and you can have statistics and you can really um, put out a strategy of you, you have to do this at the field and this, but eventually, and he said that with his voice, eventually it is you also have to give yourself to the flow. You have to give yourself to be in that tempo, to be in that vibe. And this is very much Mars Neptune. And I spotted in his chart, I looked because I thought this is Mars Neptune. And I looked in his chart and he has Mars in a square to Neptune and on the other side in a square to Saturn. So that makes him a master of his actions but also, uh, indeed, being someone who's very much with the flow and going, you could say, with the wind, they go to the right, to the left, but they are in the flow with life. This is also Mars Neptune. And that's why I always recommend people who are... I'm seeing a lot of clients lately with Mars Neptune and Mars Saturn. I mean, uh, younger clients. So, uh, because of the, the school shifts now around... Um, uh, July, August, September, I'm seeing a lot of mums and with their young adult uh, teenagers, um, where do we have to go? And with the Mars in aspect to Saturn or in aspect to Neptune, I always recommend, so if you're having problems with, with this energy, um, I always recommend doing martial arts or doing sports of some kind, but especially the martial, martial arts for Mars and Neptune, because this the Tai Chi and the, what do you call it, the Wushu, uh, all of that, because it puts you very much in your body, which is Mars, but it also um, learns you how to go with energy. If you're having transits like that, it, it also helps you to become a bit more going with the flow and not expecting too much in the future. So it's, it's definitely making one more humble, more sensitive, more non-judgmental. So in the natal chart or in transits, it's definitely about, like Jan Mulder said, going with the rhythm. Going with the, it was not going with the flow, it was going with the rhythm a bit more. This is definitely the case, but not going too much with the rhythm. So it's, it's a dance and uh, dancing, by the way, very Neptunian activity. If you love to dance, dance a bit more when you're having Neptune Mars transits. And, um, but um, what it all boils down to is the fact that your actions need to be compassionate 
and you need to it's good to do things for other people absolutely that's actually what neptune is trying to learn you especially with the transits but uh, try to be as um, as discernment as possible and if if you have trouble with that work on the confidence and trust tr uh, the people that you trust ask for their opinion because they are going to be more objective because yes it's good to help other people but just give them a hand don't give them an arm and um, this is a lot happening with mars neptune people um, i think the 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 woman of uh, johnny cash what's her name june 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 carter or something she has the mars neptune conjunction so uh what kind of man did she have? Look it up in the biography or look it up. Johnny Cash wasn't the easiest and the simplest person. So you have to be a bit of a, um, uh, you know, when I see that Mars and Neptune in a child of a woman, it's very devoted, extremely devo devoted, but it can go to your detriment. And luckily June uh, had a sun opposite Saturn, which is feet on the ground. So. Um, especially also with this Neptune and this Mars, uh, stay grounded, also very important. Try to stay grounded, try to have the feet on the ground and try to use the Neptune in the most positive way. Um, in your work maybe, or standing up for other people is also a good thing, the Neptune and the Mars, because it learns you how to stand up for yourself as well, because that's often an issue. An issue. With Mars and with Neptune. Now, what about sinistry? What about sinistry? It, again, it, it's um, when I see that in sinistry, Mars and Neptune, it can mean different things. It can mean different things, but um, again, the same energies. It can mean that the one is a bit um, prone to deception of the other person. Uh, but not necessarily. It can, uh, at its best, it means that the one admires the actions of the other, and um, it can also mean that both are working together for doing something for the collective good. Um, it can also mean that a lot of fantasy and a lot of inspiration and a lot of creativity going on in the interconnection with the couple. So. Um, having a lot of, of, of good uh, feelings towards that, especially in trine and sextiles. But with squares and conjunctions and oppositions, it can mean that the one is very passive and the other one is, is um, crossing over the other one's borders. Can't put it in the, you know, it's very difficult to say on this one aspect. You can't judge it. On this one aspect if there is other strong Saturn in, in the in the sinistry actually a Mars Neptune doesn't have to be a problem the only problem to work for is the deception because there is a, and why is it deception it's not always the other person who does something to to the other um, of course that is when you have no power let's say like a child it has no power to um, if something wrong has been done to him or her it hasn't got the power to, to, to fight that. But with adults, they can fight back. And that is the, the issue with um, the self-confidence there. But uh, at its best, it can really mean stimulating each other in one's actions and really uh, supporting each other with one's actions and to do that in a very inspiring way, inspirational very much. So when there's good Saturn there as well in the sinistry, it can be a, a nice aspect. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make or break a, a relationship when the two are aware of this deception. And the deception can come from either the one or the other is not, well, both are not confident enough, but it can also come from the other is, um, the Mars person is idealizing the Neptune person way too much. So they're not seeing the true reality of that person and therefore one day or another uh, it will knock on the door and it will feel as I'm being deceived but actually it's about deceiving yourself as well of course so I hope this was uh, helpful this uh, Neptune and um, uh, Mars uh, hor uh, not horoscope but explanation 
And remember that if you have this aspect or a transit or in sinistry, there is a need for escaping every now and then. And people think, oh, escaping is wrong, you know, drugs and alcohol and sex or whatever. But I mean, the good escapes, like, you know, relaxing and dancing and, you know, you can have a dream, but not 20 beers. But um, these people need every now and then to go to the ideal because otherwise life is very boring. So you can't blame yourself. If you, there's another person that um, has this aspect, um, the writer, uh, a Dutch writer, Marion Bloom. She has her moon uh, in a conjunction with Saturn on one side and Neptune on the other side. And she explained that, um, that uh, every now and then she says, I'm a bit bored about life. And um, then I escape in my writing and then I, I write the most uh, uh, amazing uh, fantasy about, I don't know, what people do and, and what they uh, encounter in their life and what they experience, but I do that in my fantasy. It doesn't do anyone harm, does it? But, you know, with her it's the writing, with other people it can be the drawing, it can be, it can be someone else, something else when it comes to work. But uh, I, I thought that was very nicely put that on the one hand she needs the reality and she does that with her writing, she manifests it, but she manifests the Neptune which, which is the, the ideal, you know, and sometimes the escaping from life. And we can do that in a good way as well every now and then when it's without, within the boundaries. So thanks very much for uh, watching. If you have any questions, uh, do, give me your comments, give me your experiences about Neptune and Mars. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.